Well, hi, everybody. It's uh, John back from Plaid here for another Monday evening in the Michaels Community Classroom. Thrilled to be back, and we are um, happy to have you all. We know there have got so many regulars that we see week after week. Elise, I can see you in my view. How you doing? See her every week. Um, so, um, well, I guess you guys know the drill. If you're actually, maybe you don't. If you're if you're new here, um, we are going to teach you a wonderful painting in just about an hour. Kirsten is here tonight with us, and she's going to be doing the teaching. And um, if you feel like you're falling behind or a little bit um, stressed to try and keep up, do not worry about that because all these classes are recorded. You can go and check it out later. You can tune in tomorrow or the next day and paint at your own pace if you want to do that and just relax so you can enjoy the class tonight. Watch, ask questions, and then paint tomorrow. If you do want to paint along, then many, many people do that, and you should have um, no problem with that either. So it's up to you. And uh, we'll talk more as we go, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Kirsten. Hey everybody, excited for tonight's painting. So like John said, um, this painting is probably gonna be a little bit less than an hour. This is a super fun, relaxing, kind of a different, easier style painting than, than we do a lot of times on canvas. Tonight is really fun. We are painting on glass. So tonight's surface is, I know we listed in the instructions, anything works that has two sheets of glass. So the example right here is actually one of these floating frames that's hinged and opens up like a book. That is perfect. It can be this size, which is, this is probably 10 by 10. It could be a little bit smaller. It could be a little bit bigger. These are great decorative frames that have the metal on them that you could hang. But if you don't have a frame like this, I wanted to also show you guys that you could do the same painting on just a basic floating frame. So this is another different type of floating frame that they have at Michael's. And all I have done is taken out both sheets of glass. The secret to today's painting is just having two pieces of glass. So I am gonna remove this frame, just take the two separate pieces of glass so that you guys can follow along with that. So now just some tips when painting on glass. Um, the main thing is you want to um, wash and dry your glass. And then a great tip is to just rub it um, with some rubbing alcohol. What that does is it just removes any oils um, that may be from the label or from your hands. And it just makes painting on glass perfect and easy. Okay, so you've got your glass surface. Again, two pieces of glass. If for some reason you only have one piece of glass, I'll walk you through it. There can be some tips that we can do to still have a beautiful project, but ideally you want two pieces of glass. Okay, so tonight we are using an incredible formula of folk art. So this is folk art multi-surface. And the great thing about this is it just works perfect on the slick glass surface. It works on terracotta, it works on plastic, but it is such a great paint when working on glass. So let me show you guys really quick the colors that we're using tonight. So we're using patina, which is this really beautiful light aqua. We're using teal, which is just a dark aqua. And this is an example, like if you wanted to use a turquoise or a bright blue, you could use any two shades of similar blues or you could also mix, if you had just a darker one, you could mix it with some white to get a lighter shade. But we're using teal. And then this is just a really soft peach. This is called Cool Bisque. And then a really light pink, baby pink, all multi-surface. We're using wicker white. And then two greens. And I'm using thicket and citrus green. And then here's another example. If you happen to only have one green, you could have a darker green and you could mix a lighter green with, with some of the white. Okay, so then you're gonna need a pencil and a scrap piece of paper because we're gonna do a really simple pattern. And then you are gonna need a paint marker. And this is just a medium tip let's see, just a medium tip black paint marker. A Sharpie would, would work, um, but really any paint marker to do the fun details at the end. And then I'm using just a basic Craftsmart 
um, brush set. But what we're going to use mostly is just these different size flat brushes. And I always like to tell people the set comes with all of these different flat brushes. But if you've got a larger one, a medium one, and a small one, whatever works best for you. There's nothing in this painting tonight that needs the exact size brush. So you just want a variety of flat brushes for tonight's project. Okay. And then always a palette or a plate for your paints. Always some paper towels because we don't want to use a lot of water when working on the glass. And then just some water to clean your brushes. Okay, so those are the supplies. How's that, John? Any questions? Yeah, that's on good. I'll go over the, um, so just for those who have said, if you're painting on one piece of glass, she'll shine it, She'll sort of show you how you can do that as, as you go. And then um, I will also type in the, the colors as she begins to use them. Perfect. Okay. So now just a tip, if you are painting on one pane of glass, perfectly fine, perfectly wonderful. The biggest thing that you'll just have to do a little bit differently than us is your dry time. So for example, let me show you guys on this. So I've got side A, which is my first pane of glass, which I'm gonna do the marker on. The second piece of glass, we are gonna paint both on the front and then you'll see we're also gonna paint on the back. So the only thing different that you want to do if you're painting on one pane of glass is you're going to do this marker, this very last step over your oh, directly onto your to the front of your pane of glass. And the only thing that's important is you want to make sure that your paint is perfectly dry, because if you put that marker onto even damp paint, one, you'll mess up your marker, but two, you just won't get a good look. So if for some reason you are painting on one pane of glass, the key to it is make sure that your paint is perfectly dry because you're going to be doing this paint marker set or step, I'm sorry, over the paint. It'll be beautiful, but just remember, you might need to wait or hit it with a blow dryer so that it's completely dry. So that's the biggest tip, but otherwise you'll get all the same techniques, all of the, um, all of the same, the finished look, you'll just have to make sure that paint is dry. Okay. So make sure your glass is clean and dry. And what I'm going to do is I am first going to get out. And this is just a scrap piece of paper from the computer printer. It can be the same size. It can be a little bit smaller. All I want to do is show you guys what we try to do here is take out all of the intimidation of applying a pattern. Sometimes applying a, a pattern is the hardest part of painting. So what I want to do, I'm going to open up that piece of glass so that you guys can see just the painted part. Let me scoot that over just a little bit so you guys can see this. So what I always like to do is tell people to break everything down into really simple shapes. Like instead of overthinking the shape of this leaf, I want you to look at it as a really sloppy, long heart. You can see it's the same shape as a heart but with really sloppy edges and a, a longer point. All of these are shaped like a heart. Not perfect, very irregular. So with that, that's how we're gonna create our pattern. So on our scrap piece of paper with a pencil, all I'm gonna do is do a line anywhere on this. It doesn't have to be exact to your surface, but I just, and I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker. I just wanna give the vase a home. So just a line. And then you can see my vase sits a little bit to the side. So I am just gonna very loosely draw that vase. Not perfect. We're not gonna color it in exactly. I just want you to have placement for when we go to the surface. So it's like a C sitting on its back. I'm gonna do a really light line just to represent the top of that vase. And then here's where I want you guys to just be really loose, turn your paper if it allows you to, um, if it allows you to place your leaf patterns in more of a random pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this leaf and all I'm gonna do is just sketch, no rhyme or reason, a heart with a really long point. And I turn my paper a little, just so that's not going straight up and down. And then I'm gonna go up to this little guy 
I'm going to turn my paper again, only if that helps, because I want to draw that leaf going in a little bit different direction. And when doing a like almost like a sketch pattern like this, you don't need to erase, you don't need to overthink it. If you want it a little bit longer, just go right over that. You just want two different sized, really long point, almost like hearts to represent where your leaves are gonna go. And then you can see this little guy overlaps my vase. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little dot where the bottom of his, of his leaf would be. And again, just another really irregular heart. You don't wanna overthink it where they're all going in the same direction or they're all the same size because any plant that you would draw, all the leaves are always gonna be different, different in size, different in shape, different in direction. And then I'm gonna go over to this big guy on the left and I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm gonna do this heart maybe just a little bit thicker. Again, with that long pointy bottom though. Looks like a bunch of hearts coming out of a vase. And then this little one on top. Another tip when you're painting something like this, whether it be flowers or leaves, is always it's best to do an odd number. It just is better for the composition of the painting. So I'm gonna turn that and I'm just gonna fill that open space with just a smaller leaf pattern. But again, just look at them as hearts because everyone's got has been drawing hearts all their life. So it's really easy. Whereas if you look at it as a leaf, it might be a little bit more intimidating. So you've got all your little leaves coming out of your base just for placement. And then to make it all come together, I want you guys to draw your lines. So on this particular plant, the point you don't have to draw these. I just want to show you guys. This is where the stems will come out of these individual leaves. So if the stem comes out of there, I'm going to draw him going that way. So instead of coming up and over like a rainbow, he's behind that leaf, but just so the composition is correct. This little guy, because he's front on, you really aren't going to see a stem. This guy, instead of doing a rainbow that comes down, that stem would grow down like that. And remember this, have fun with it, make it your own. If you want one giant tropical leaf, beautiful and perfect, same techniques. If you want less or more or bigger leaves, make this exactly what you want it to be. Same with this one. This stem is not gonna come up and over arched it would naturally fall behind that leaf. So I'm just gonna put that one right there. And then this little guy, again, it wouldn't arch out. It would just kind of come over. So I'm gonna put him coming down like that. And just a really simple way to give you a guide and placement once we move to the surface. Okay, any questions on our pattern, our little hearts? No? Okay. So my first pane of glass, I am gonna put that pattern underneath that piece of glass. Here in the studio, we have glitter on everything. So I'm gonna remove that piece of glitter that just was not supposed to be there. And I like to offset, instead of having the vase in the very center, I just think it looks really nice for the composition of the painting to have it sit a little bit more to the right. So just position that piece of glass over your pattern, scoot your other piece of glass over to the side and out of the way, clean and dry. Make sure there's no water on that. Okay, and now we are ready to paint. So the first color we're gonna use is the wicker white. And I'm gonna put that on my palette paper. If you've got a plastic plate or even a glass or paper plate, use that as your palette. And then I'm gonna use the dark green, which is thicket. And I'm just gonna put both of those on my palette. And I am gonna- It was oh, wicker white you did? 
I did the wicker white. Yep. And then the dark green, which is thicket. Yeah. I put both of those on my palette. And then I'm just going to use the half inch brush. Also, there is, let's see, what is that in the kit? I think that's a number 10 flat brush. So use whichever one is most, most comfortable for you if you're using a bigger piece of glass or maybe a smaller frame. But either flat brush is perfect. No water. You want to make sure it's nice and dry. And the first thing that we are going to do, I'm going to open this up so you guys can see it kind of as an example. The first thing we're going to do is we are just going to base coat our vase. And when working on the glass, I always say you put a lot of paint, load a lot of paint into your brush. And that way you get really good coverage when working on the glass. One of the neat characteristics, this is gonna be hard to see, I should have started with the green, but you are going to, let me lift that up so you guys can see. See how good with my hand in there, how good and wonderful the coverage is with the Folk Art Multi Surface. You can see that no water and just a little bit more paint on your brush, you get really good coverage with just one coat. It's kind of weird with my hand under there, but working on the white, I wanted you guys to be able to see that. So you're just placing your vase onto that top layer of glass. You don't want too much paint. You don't want it really thick, um, but you want to get really good, even coverage for these base coat areas. Then I'm gonna clean that same brush in my water, but make sure it's really dry on a paper towel. And really just because if you had water in your brush, it would make the paint a little bit more transparent and we want really good coverage working on this clear glass frame. So now using the dark thicket, all I'm gonna do is go in there and base coat. And this will be a place where you guys can see it better. See how beautiful and creamy that paint is. I'm just gonna base coat with a really irregular edge. Now don't overthink your pattern. Like you don't have to trace it exactly. You're just using that as a guide and almost softening the edges a little bit more. So it's a really natural, edge like a leaf on a plant would be. But see how I've got a pretty good amount of paint on my brush and I'm just softly applying that so it's a really consistent base coat for those leaves. <coughs> You're gonna do each one, just ending it in a really soft point. And each leaf is just this solid dark green color. And I'm making those edges just a little bit more irregular than my pattern. Just so it's more organic like a plant would be in real life. But see how beautiful that dark green is on the glass? And then this little guy, just again, just a little imperfect brush stroke for the edge of those leaves. But where a simple heart is so much easier than a complicated leaf pattern. When working on glass like this and doing a really modern painting like this, seeing your brush strokes is actually beautiful. So don't worry about doing two or three coats to eliminate those brush strokes. It actually makes for a beautiful result at the end. I love this dark green. This is one of my favorite Folk Art Multi-Surface paints. How's it going, John? Everyone's so quiet. I, yeah, I mean, I think everyone is uh, just painting along here. We don't have a lot of questions, so I think we got it. 
uh, what kind of brushes? These are Craft Smart brushes. Is that right, Kirsten from Michaels that you have? That's correct. It's a basic brush set. Um, and it has mostly uh, these nice flats in there. It does have a little script liner, but it's got several different flat brush sizes and it's just a great all purpose set. Got it. And if you're, if you're just joining, we are just, she's just painting on some glass that came in like a floating frame. So yep. she's gonna use two different pieces of glass that are the same size, or you could get the one that's in the supply list, which is like a hinged um, deal that they have at Michael's, but any glass from a picture frame would work just fine. Absolutely. And ideally you want two pieces. It's perfect to have two. If not, one will work, will work just fine. Okay, so we're base coating just the white and then just the leaves. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am just going to put a little bit of color. This is where painting on layers of glass is really fun. So on the bottom, let me see if you guys can see this. So you can see that really pretty light patina is on this side of the glass, but then the base coat, the darker patina is on the back side of the glass. So it's just a really nice modern look by painting a little bit on the front and then the solid base coat on the back. So what we're gonna do, whatever your light patina and your dark teal or your light blue and your dark blue, whatever your light and dark colors for the base of your painting are, you're gonna pick the lighter of the two. So if you're following along exactly, it's this patina. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my palette. I'm gonna use another flat brush. This is the half inch in the Craft Smart kit. Oh, and look what I did. Another great thing of working on glass when I showed you guys that, I ran that right across my painting. I'm just gonna wipe that off with a paper towel. Sorry about that. Another great thing about working on glass, you can wipe it right off and fix it. Okay, fix that right up. Let me get that little part off. It's kind of like dry erase for the painter. Okay, I got that off. Okay, so on the bottom, I've got that little line just to represent the table that the vase is sitting on. I don't wanna color in that entire area because when I base coat the teal on the back, I want that to show through. It's almost shading and highlighting. Let me more carefully bring that in. It's almost shading and highlighting just by painting the darker color on the back. So all I'm gonna do is just some very loose brush strokes but only going left to right, not coloring the entire area. And again, a lot of paint, not too much that it's thick and it will never dry, but so you get really good coverage. Maybe just that much. If you like the light patina better, add a little bit more, but definitely leave some spots so that we can go back in on the back and add that dark, that dark teal. And this is Folk Art Multi-Surface Teal and Patina, if you're following along exactly. And then for this really fun, modern, almost like an art deco background, we are gonna use the baby pink and this cool bisque. I'm gonna put that on my palette as well. I love these colors together. And using that same flat brush, getting all the water out of it on a paper towel, and the same thing here, the difference between painting on the front and painting on the back is just the way it layers, the way the light ref reflects it. So I don't want you to completely base coat your area. 
you're just going to go into that cool bisque first and just randomly pick some areas and do very long, simple strokes. Not stripes, but almost like you're creating a highlight or a block of color on just one section of your painting. And then I'm gonna sneak over here and do the same thing. Not a perfect square, not a perfect rectangle, but just long brush strokes with a good amount of paint on your brush. And do a little bit up here, almost like patches of color. And this is just with that cool bisque. You could do a light pink and a dark pink. You could do a, a yellow would be beautiful, a light yellow and a dark yellow. Um, how would you make a cool bisque color like this if they didn't have it? Um, so this could be a lot of white and a little bit of orange and you would get a soft peach. Um, even if you had just the baby pink, you could add a lot of white to that. It would be more of a light pink. Um, but you could add a little bit of yellow. So anything close to an orange, you could you could create a really, really light peach. Yeah, just basically almost just like a little tan color that you yeah. want, right? A little yellow and a little white. yellow and a little pink. Yep. Okay. But just little patches of color. They don't have to be exactly like this one. They can be longer, wider. You just want to make sure that they're not perfect squares perfect rectangles, but just a really nice kind of a modern, kind of a modern patch of color. Yeah. A little bit down here, just to be next to that vase a little bit, but you definitely don't want to fill it in because you want that pink to show through when we base coat the back. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush in the water getting it good and dry. And I'm just gonna put a few areas of the baby pink. We're gonna base coat the back solid with baby pink, but I still wanna put just a few spots of baby pink on the front because it still looks so different when it's on the front versus on the back. Do a little bit there. I'm gonna move up on here and do a little bit kind of overlapping that clay bisque, but no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting this paint. You can see how beautiful the coverage is, even a pink, which is a hard color to get full coverage with. This folk art multi-surface is such a great paint for that. Maybe just like that. So just again, little areas of color. I think I dripped a little bit of water right there. The only thing with water is you just want to get that off just because it makes your paint more transparent and take a little longer to dry. Okay, so you've got little spots of color. I'm just going to clean off my brush. And what we are going to do now is we are going to add some of the light green. If you guys can see this little leaf over here, we're going to add a little bit of this light green to your leaves. And the neat thing about doing it while it's wet is it will kind of blend and shade as you're adding it over that dark thicket. So this is the smaller flat brush. This is, I think, a number 10 in the set. But again, just use whatever you're most comfortable with. If you like a really small flat brush, there's also a six in the set. So whichever one is best for you. And all I'm gonna do is visually know that the leaf is divided in half. So a left side of each, of each heart and a right side of each heart, just because that's where that natural vein would be. And that's where I want to create really just modern squares to represent the details in this leaf. So if you're more comfortable, you could just staying up on the chisel. I'm going into that light green, which we are using citrus green. I'm just gonna, more for confidence, I'm gonna just do a really thin line down the center of each leaf, just to represent where that vein would be. Not perfect 
but just something to represent the left and the right side of that heart. And not perfect, because this is just a really loose, fun, modern painting. Okay, so you can see on there, now I've got left and right, which is great for confidence. And I'm just gonna pick a few random sections. Like you can see on this leaf, just that top part of it is the light green. So I'm gonna apply that directly over the dark, letting it mix a little bit, but stopping at that center vein. And then I'm gonna jump over to the other side and do this little section with that lighter green, but letting it mix in with the thicket. Because then you get a dark, a light, a medium. You get so many tones of green by only using a light and a dark. If you get too much paint on your brush, I'm just wiping off the excess on a paper towel, not going into the water at all. And then I'm going over to the other side of this little leaf using that center line just kind of as a guide and just doing a little patch on that side. Just a little section on the other side of that center, just to give him some detail. Not going in the water, but just going back into the light green. I'm gonna to go to this leaf over here and I'm gonna use that center line as a guide of where to stop but just using that light green, but letting it pick up the thicket. I'm gonna give him a little highlight. I'm gonna go onto the other side, just using that center line and just fill that in, letting the thicket pick up and create all those different values of green. I'm gonna do one more little, almost like little quilt squares but not, allow, not making it perfect, not making it solid light green, just allowing it to create some detail. I'm gonna go onto this little heart and do the same thing. I'm calling them hearts now instead of leaves. Leaves, it's a hard word. But see how the dark green and the light green mix together, giving you all those values. Jumping around to all of the different, all of the different leaves and just giving them that detail. Not perfect, very loose brush strokes. Again, you wanna see that on a modern painting like this, it just creates so much character. They're not all the same size. Some are larger, some are smaller. Wiping that off on the paper towel, not going in and adding any water. If some is too, if some of the little sections maybe are too light, go right into that thicket and you can just darken that right up. Don't wash it off. Don't, don't add water. Don't use a towel. Just add the dark thicket right over the top. Just adding some modern details to the dark green. Staying up on the chisel edge, which is the flat end of the brush, you could go in and maybe just create a little bit bigger point on the end of your leaf. leaf. Just a little one to make it really natural and organic. Not too long, but just a little detail. If you want to, same brush, it's got that citrus green on there. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white, not too much, but you can see having that citrus green already on my brush, it's just another value of that citrus green, but a little bit lighter. I might do one or two little sections, still focusing on the left or the right of each leaf, whichever you pick. So like on this one, for example, I'm gonna to stay to the left of that center 
vein, that lighter green mixed with a little touch of white, but letting that thicket come into my brush and create just another value. So that's white with the citrus. I'm gonna show you right there. So I'm just gonna, using that center line as a guide, just go in and fill in just a few sections with just another shade of green. So there, you've got beautiful detail. You've got the little patches of color, very irregular. Your little base should be totally base coated. And then you've got little highlights on your tabletop or on the surface that your that your vase and your plant are sitting on. So here is where if you are working on one piece of glass, I want you to either hit it with a blow dryer or even pause and maybe do this step tomorrow because I don't want you to mess up what you've done by working on on wet paint. So what we're going to do is we are going to flip this glass over. Now, remember, this is still wet. So don't flip it over onto your work surface. Either get it completely dry, or what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use the frame. Oh, let me see that. I'm gonna use the frame that the glass came out of to hold my glass off of the surface. So you can see that's the side that we just painted that is still a little bit wet. This is the frame that it came out of. I am gonna flip that glass over so it's not touching the surface. It's not completely dry. And if you set that on your work surface, it would stick. So see how I've got space in between because I'm using my frame to hold that piece of glass off of my table. So now you've got all your painting underneath and you've got a clean piece of glass, the back of your, your main piece of glass. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Perfect, so no questions. Okay. So I'm gonna bring our finished sample in there just so you guys can see it. And now we are going to base coat, which whenever you craft paint or paint, you usually base coat first. So now we are just gonna base coat the back. And all I'm gonna do, you don't need your pattern anymore. So I got rid of that using my largest flat brush and my dark teal. I am going to eyeball where my tabletop would be and I am gonna completely base coat, covering up that light teal that's on the other side, covering up the bottom of that base, and just base coating the bottom of the back of the glass. Beautiful color, you get great coverage. and get a little bit more of this dark teal. Hope oh, you want me to scoot that up a little bit so you guys can see it, yeah. But just creating that solid base coat color that'll show through when it's completed. And then using that same large flat brush, I'm gonna dry that off. Get it clean and dry that off. And I am gonna base coat the entire top part of my painting. Now here, you don't have to worry about the stems because the stems we are gonna go back and do with our marker at the end. I wanted to draw them on our pattern though, just so you guys had an idea of why we were starting them in the section that we were. Okay, so now you've got the top part of your canvas. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that baby pink and a little bit more of that clay bisque. Using my largest flat brush, I am gonna base coat the entire back. And what I'm gonna do, if you want it to just be pink, that is beautiful. If you just want it to be the clay bisque, that is beautiful too. I'm gonna to do a few patches. So this is clay bisque on the other side. 
So I'm gonna do the dark pink, I'm sorry, the baby pink around that. So when it's finished and I flip it over, those two colors are sitting on top of each other. Whatever you do here though will be absolutely beautiful. And then I'm gonna go into that clay bisque without cleaning my brush in the water. And there's some baby pink right there. So I'm gonna put the clay bisque over that. And really just so there is a lot of contrast when I flip this over. I love the way the clay bisque and the pink work together. So that's why in some of the areas, not exactly, but I'm putting a lot of clay bisque over where the baby pink is. And I'm putting a lot of baby pink over where the clay bisque is on the other side. Does that make sense? A little bit? Yep. But really no rhyme or reason to this. We're just base coating all of the exposed glass on the back by alternating between the baby pink and the clay bisque. No water in our brush and just letting it blend a little bit if it needs to and just completely covering all of those areas. So we're basically base coating last, whereas traditionally when working on a canvas, you would base coat first. I'm letting it blend a little bit just so it's softer edges but you've got a completely base coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay that there's a few areas that may look like they need a second coat, but when this is done and we add the details with the paint marker, it will be absolutely beautiful. So there is the back of your painting. So really your base coat. Now remember, we're working on a really wet surface. So all I'm gonna do, you guys, if you're working on two pieces of glass, you could just, scoot this to the side and let it dry or hit it with a hairdryer. But I wanna flip it over so you guys can see. So your base coat is on the back and then all of the fun painting that we did is on the front. But look how beautiful that looks. The pink on the back, it's hard for you guys to see it on that. The pink on the back looks different than the pink on the front. And the way the teal, oh, let me move that up, scoot that bottle. The teal on the bottom, the dark teal is behind the light teal. And I hope you guys can see it. You probably won't be able to see it on mine, but even the little bit of thickness of that glass just gives such a nice modern look. Okay, so I'm gonna set that. Oh, I'm gonna set that back down softly. Again, not on my work surface, but using that frame to keep it off of the surface. Okay, so now I'm gonna get that second piece of glass in these beautiful floating frames that Michaels has, and they have them in so many different sizes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scoot this one over, but let me show you guys real quick. So all of our detail, the stems, the details in each little section of our painting, maybe a little accent on your vase. Oh, I need to get a little bit higher. All that is gonna be done with the paint marker. So I want you guys not to worry about a pattern because we're not gonna apply a pattern over the glass. I want you to just kind of view it as we're doodling over, we're doodling over our painting. So really loose, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't wanna follow the outline. You want it kinda of to be offset and very organic like that. See when I turn the glass, it's not exact, it's not an outline, but you're just accenting the areas that we, we have painted. Okay, let's scoot that over. Now what I'm gonna do, actually let me do this. Now my frame has these little, um, I don't know what you call them. These little brads that slide in to secure the glass at the very end, once your project is done and ready to hang. All I'm gonna do is slide those in. 
if you hit your um, project with a hairdryer and it's totally dry, you just wanna make sure that that paint is totally dry and you don't wanna set glass on anything that's wet. So I slid those little brads in. Those are gonna hold my second piece of glass away from my painting, but allow me to use my painting as a pattern. So I'm using just a medium tip black paint marker. Take that up. Make sure it's primed and ready. Make sure you've got good flow and it's mixed inside that marker. Just kind of practice a little bit on your palette or on a scrap piece of paper. Now this is where all we are doing is doodling. If you wanna bring your pattern back over just as reference, perfect. But maybe start where you're most confident. So outlining and detailing the flowers, or I'm sorry, the leaves is something that's pretty easy. So all I want you guys to do is again, not tracing it exactly, but just a really loose, almost like a scribble edge. I want you to go around each leaf that you have painted. I want you to go down the center to create that vein. And then maybe just in a few areas, just define those little highlights that you created with the lighter green. That might be a little bit hard to see. Let's see if I can pick up that glass and see if you guys can see it. You, um, some people were asking, you definitely can use a Sharpie or a regular marker if you have that. Yep, well, not a regular marker. Well, so a Sharpie, yeah, it's a permanent. Yep. Yep, a permanent marker would be perfect. Sharpie even has now, I've seen, um, I think they're called oil-based Sharpies. So they're they're almost like a paint marker, but they're, they work perfectly. If you are a really good painter with the liner brush that is in that same brush set that we've used, you can even do this with black paint. Um, but I love to just doodle it with a marker. It's such a nice modern look when working on the layered frames. And which particular marker, paint marker, is that that you're using? So I am using the Craft Smart. These are available at Michael's. And this is just the medium tip. So you can see it's just, it's not the fine tip, and they have a really fat chisel edge. This is just the medium, medium tip. Okay but you're just doodling. You're not doing every leaf the same. You're just creating a really loose pattern around each one, doing the center vein, a few little details. Whoops. It's so fun doing it on the glass. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see the outline. But just using that painting as a guide, and these are the fun finished details of each section of your painting. And then it, if you have your pattern and you wanna use it as reference, remember the center of your heart is where your stems would come out of naturally. So the center of that little leaf naturally the stem would come down maybe there and then into my vase, stopping at the top of my little vase. And so for this little guy, remember, he wouldn't arch around, he would naturally flow like this. So I'm gonna bring that stem and it coming down like that, stopping at the top of my vase. This little guy would kind of start right there where the, where the heart meets. So he would come down maybe like that, put a little bend into him just so it's really organic and natural. And this guy, remember, not a long arch, but he would almost fall behind that leaf. So just a line in your mind and then connect. So you really soft, organic stems bringing each leaf into your vase. And then to add, 
just some fun details around your container. Again, I'm just gonna outline them. I'm gonna do a little highlighting. Be really cute. The Memphis pattern is, pattern is so popular right now. You could add polka dots to your little container. You could add those cute little Memphis triangle patterns, just depending on how modern you wanna make that. But just a fun little doodle around your little vase or your little plant container. And then I'm gonna do the same thing where the background meets the tabletop, just a line, making sure your marker is ready on a scrap piece of paper or your palette. And then just doodle a few little lines just to add some details. Just a few little scribbles, maybe a little scribble or a shadow where that vase would sit on the table. If you wanted to add just a few little lines up here, just to define it and just be a little more modern and creative. You could do a round. Just really have fun with the marker, even a little second line on a few leaf, leaves. You don't wanna do it on each one, but just to doodle and make it just really loose and modern. That Memphis pattern or those really cute little random, almost like sprinkles. That would be a cute little pattern that you could add to some of the areas of your little container or pot. You could do your whole vase, which would be adorable or just a few areas like that. Just really loose and modern. You can even add little patterns like that, polka dots, to little areas of that really pretty pink background. Hmm. Have fun with the marker. It just adds the finishing touches, the details to your really beautiful base coat. You could personalize this base. Maybe you had, you were giving this as a gift. That would be fun. You could do a, do um, maybe an initial or a monogram. Just something really cute to make it your own. So go back in there. If you want the stems a little bit thicker, you could just go right over that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Very modern. So there you go. And then sign it with your marker. Such a great gift. So then the key to this and the only thing that is really, really important is you want to make sure that when you pick this up and put it back into the frame, that it's completely dry. So what I would do is I would leave this until tomorrow and then I would, this would come right off. Again, those little brads were keeping it from touching my first layer of glass. You've got that really fun doodle. I know it's hard to see. You've got that really fun doodle. And then you would just reassemble those two panes of glass, put that in that frame, hang that, give that as a gift, just a perfect, fun, modern painting. So Don, do we have any questions? I don't think so. Everyone seemed to have a lot of fun with it. Um, I think so it's just yeah, a so modern, fun way to paint. What would really be fun even is a kid would love this. Just apply a ton of color to their first layer of glass, let that dry, and then give it back to them and let them doodle. They just have so much confidence when they're using a marker. So they could doodle anything over the painted background and they make just really amazing pieces of art. So that's really a fun thing to do with this same technique. Yeah. So um, as I think was mentioned at the beginning, but if not, you can go to the michaels.com slash classes where you registered for this. And that's where all of the paintings are, uh, sorry, all the classes are recorded and you can access. So if you were to um, wanted to keep up with the, um, with the pace a little bit e more easily, or if yep. you didn't have a chance to get your hands on two pieces of glass, yep. you can go get your stuff and then come back and watch. Um, at, at your leisure. Um, yep. As always, so I know you want to show that next painting. As yep. always, um, we encourage you if you did paint the painting, we want to see it. So please hashtag make it with Michaels. 
Michael's classes. I think, Jimena, you can put the hashtags that you guys normally use for Michael's. I think it's make it with Michael's and Michael's uh -huh. classes and yeah, all and great. always um, hashtag plaid crafts. Yes, um, so that we can see them. Yeah. Yes. We'd love to see them. So she okay. is going to show next week's painting. Yep. So this is Monday night with Jess. And this is just a beautiful, very simple canvas painting, a little bit of watercolor techniques, but just a great, um, easy canvas kind of to start summer. So yes, will... that'll be next Monday. Yes. Yep. Same okay. time, same place. We look forward to seeing you guys. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. -bye.